Welcome to the Zadikov CCVP Labs video series. My name is Sunfish, and in part two, we will cover the basic configuration of a voice over IP network. First of all, we will start with the voice VLANs and this uh, mysterious uh, special trunk that often leads to uh, misunderstandings and confusion. So we will have a close look at the concept of the voice VLANs, uh, what what it is and how it works. Then power over Ethernet, the three flavors that are currently out there, followed by DHCP. The basics of DHCP um, are covered in the uh, CCNA curriculum, so uh, you should be familiar already with uh, what DHCP is, how it works, and also how to configure uh, DHCP um, on an iOS device using this uh, Java-based GUI, the uh, SDM tool. Now we will take a look at the uh, configuration on the command line, as well as how to configure DHCP on a Windows Server 2003. On the one hand, Microsoft servers are uh, very common in the real world uh, for this kind of network services. And it might not be so obvious how to uh, configure necessary options like uh, this uh, option 150. So we will have a close look um, at that one. Then um, AutoQS for hard phones and soft phones, so the uh, IP communicator, uh, followed by port security. The basics of port security are covered in the CCNA uh, curriculum as well. But you will see that there are some, uh, well, special rules uh, how to configure port security on voice ports. Then a quick review of uh, some common best practices. And finally, I could not resist to introduce some of the uh, new iOS features related to voice uh, that Cisco introduced with uh, their latest and greatest uh, new iOS image. But let's start with the concept of the voice VLAN. First of all, the voice VLAN feature is disabled by default. So you have to uh, configure the uh, switch port voice VLAN command on every port where you want this feature uh, to be enabled. This is different from the uh, access VLAN. As you know, by default, all ports are in VLAN 1. So it's like having uh, an invisible switch port access VLAN 1 command on every port by default. However, um, there is no default voice VLAN, so you must explicitly enable this feature on each port. Uh, if you do it, um, if you enter this the switch port voice VLAN command, then you will notice that uh, there is automatically a second command uh, listed in your running config for those ports, the spanning tree port fast command. So enabling the uh, voice VLAN feature also enables port fast. Port fast which of, makes sense if you think about it, because uh, by default, spanning tree causes a 30 second uh, forwarding delay on your switch ports, which is of course not a good idea if you plug in any um, IP phones. So as soon as you uh, configure a voice VLAN, uh, the iOS automatically enables the port fast feature for you as well. The trunking mode on those ports does not matter uh, when you uh, configure the voice VLAN feature. So uh, whether the port is uh, in the trunking mode or configured as access port, you can enter this uh, switch port voice VLAN command, um, even though it only makes sense really on, on access ports. But Still, if you have a trunk port, you will notice that this command is accepted by the switch and also listed in your uh, configuration. But uh, 
Well, then you may ask yourself, then why does Cisco say it's it's only supported on access ports? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Um, which VLANs are allowed on trunk ports by default? Straight and simple answer, all VLANs. So for the switch, um, there is no, no difference whether you have uh, voice VLANs or access VLANs. Those voice VLANs are just some more VLANs, and by default, they are all allowed on your trunk ports. So you don't need the switch port voice VLAN command um, to allow this uh, VLAN on your trunk ports because it's allowed by default. We will take a closer look um, at those things uh, again when we uh, go uh, move on to the uh, command line. CDP is used to, to communicate this uh, voice VLAN ID. So the uh, switch uses CDP to uh, inform the IP phone about the voice VLAN that is configured on that port. As you may know, CDP is also used uh, for a, a few other things um, like uh, power consumption. So on the other hand, the IP phone uh, uses CDP to tell the switch uh, the power level that he would like to uh, receive. But we will take a look at those uh, additional things like power consumption, um, trust boundary, and so on uh, as well during the course of this uh, video series. In general, uh, the voice VLAN should use uh, lower ID uh, numbers compared to the data or access VLAN, simply because uh, in case of failure, spanning tree uh, switches the lower IDs first. So using lower ID for your voice uh, VLANs simply means that they are switched uh, over to uh, uh, a failover path uh, before the data VLAN. Once you enable the voice VLAN, you create a special trunk between uh, the switch port and the IP phone, which is also often called a pseudo trunk or a mini trunk. In some older Cisco documentation, I also found the term multi VLAN access port, which describes this uh, connection pretty well, because we have indeed an access port, but now two VLANs are allowed on this uh, access port, the voice and the data VLAN. All the traffic in the data VLAN remains untagged. So uh, a PC connected to the IP phone uh, sends and receives the standard Ethernet frames, just uh, like we expected from uh, any, any access port. However, all the voice traffic gets encapsulated um, by the IP phone using uh, .1Q. So we are indeed using this uh, trunking protocol um, on an access port in order to uh, separate our data traffic from our voice traffic. If you do a show interface trunk, you will notice that those ports are not listed just as we expect from uh, any access port. Um, on the other hand, if we do a show interface status command, we will see that uh, those ports are now listed two times. Uh, they are listed under the voice VLAN and also under the data VLAN. A simple basic configuration for voice ports um, will typically starts with the switch port mode access command. Uh, then we have to uh, assign our access and voice VLAN IDs. I'll be using VLAN 178 for the uh, data traffic and uh, ID 78 for my uh, voice VLAN traffic. So the switch port voice VLAN 78 command will also enable the port fast feature. And as a best practice, um, I also added the uh, spanning tree BPDU card enable command 
to prevent our users from introducing any rogue switches into our network. So before moving on to the command line, let's have a quick look at the uh, topology of uh, the uh, lab setup. In this lab, I'm using uh, Class C networks, where the uh, third octet corresponds to the uh, VLAN ID, so the uh, data VLAN 178 is using the 192.168.178 network, and the voice VLAN uh, with the ID 78 is using the 192.168.78.0 network. Um, in the center, you'll see a layer three switch, which is uh, able to provide power over Ethernet to the uh, connected IP phones. So I'm using uh, two older ones, the 7912 uh, two phones, and also two newer phones, 7965G, as well as a Cisco IP communicator installed on a PC. The layer three switch um, uses the .100 IP address in both um, VLANs and is also um, doing the uh, routing between our VLANs. On the left side, there is the infrastructure part. Um, you should note that this port uh, is not a trunk port. It's configured as an access port um, simply because um, there are a few more devices um, on, on the left side in my uh, home network. Um, so um, I'm, I'm using an access port here to uh, separate um, the lab from uh, the rest of my network. The server is uh, providing the usual uh, network services, DNS, DHCP for the uh, data VLAN as well as NTP. Um, the uh, CUCM uh, virtual machine is actually um, installed on the same uh, physical server. So uh, um, this uh, machine here is uh, a virtual machine on the dot .10 server. And then finally, um, there is uh, another PC connected here. Uh, that's the one I'm using for the recording. And later on, um, I will use this PC as well uh, to install the Cisco IP communicator um, for some demonstration. So enough said, let's move on to the command line of our switch.